Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Smash JT. In this episode, I want to talk about a few of the things that made the Wii U fail, and why I see a couple of those actually happening right now with the Nintendo Switch. When talking about the success or a failure of a given system, typically it comes down to the processing power, the graphics, the sound, the controllers, what the system even looks like, but most importantly, the games. I'm going to talk about the release dates for those said games. This is something that Nintendo has never seemed to care about in the past, nor have they changed their line of thinking in the present with it. They don't care about timed exclusives. They do care a lot about their IPs and getting those on their own systems, obviously, and typically those are what carry Nintendo systems to whatever success they make it to. But they never care about timed exclusives, and I feel like that's going to really damage the brand image of the Switch if they don't get on that train. I brought with me today a few examples of what I'm talking about and why the Wii U kind of crashed and burned in its own little way. These are all really great games that I'm going to be talking about, but there's something that went wrong with either the marketing or the timing of the release date that really screwed with the success of the Wii U. The first game I want to talk about is Splinter Cell Blacklist. This is an incredible game, but it came out for Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. And while it did release on the same date, unfortunately the Wii U version was never discussed during the E3 initial press conference for it. So when it released, a lot of people didn't even know it was coming out for the Wii U. In addition to that, the Collector's Edition never came out for the Wii U either. So if you wanted to get that badass remote control plane that came with it, you'd be getting it for the Xbox 360 or the PlayStation 3. The next game I want to talk about is Deus Ex Human Revolution Director's Cut. Now the original Deus Ex Human Revolution came out for Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 in 2011, and this game came out for the Wii U, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3 almost two and a half years later. So you could imagine the price point of the original game being bargain bin priced while this was coming out at full retail price. That was explained away by the publisher that the reason why it was an increased price was that it actually had a whole lot more content in it. And while that may be well and good, I don't know many people that would jump at paying $60 for a new game when you can get it used or even new for the original version for 10 to 20 bucks. Now I'm not going to go through all these games and take forever talking about each one of them. You get my point. The same thing happened with Call of Duty Black Ops 2. The same thing happened with Mass Effect 3 Special Edition. Heck, the same thing even happened with Rayman Legends. Yes, this was supposed to be originally a Wii U exclusive, and then Ubisoft came out saying, actually it's going to come out for the other consoles, but don't worry, it's going to come out on the Wii U first. And then they delayed it because of technical issues on the Wii U. And then they further delayed it because they actually announced they wanted it to be a simultaneous release with the other consoles. So it works in one direction where the companies will hold the game off and make sure it's available for all the consoles if it was supposed to start out on the Wii U. But if it starts out on another system, it's coming to the Wii U way afterwards. Anyways, the point of this video is to talk about the Nintendo Switch and how I have some serious concerns that the same thing is going to be happening to the Nintendo Switch that happened with these games on the Wii U. And I'm all for giving it a pass right now because it's just in its infancy as far as the long-term goals of the console are concerned. LEGO City Undercover is already available on the Wii U. People who missed out on the Wii U can get it on the Switch now. But again, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, already available on the Wii U. Splatoon 2, to me, great game, but typically I get the same gameplay experience out of it. It feels like the same thing. It's more like a Splatoon 1.5, it's not a Splatoon 2. It's the same thing as the original Splatoon on the Wii U. You can get the same fun and same experience by playing this on the Wii U. And Zelda Breath of the Wild came out for both systems. There's a ton of overlap with these systems nowadays, and I get it. They want to make their money, and there's a ton of money that goes into the development of these games. But the problem is, if you flood the market with the same game on different consoles, you're not going to sell it twice. Well, I actually bought a lot of these twice, but... Most people aren't going to buy these twice. And that's going to hurt the sales numbers of the games, and as a result, is going to hurt the overall console sales for the systems. Now again, there are a ton of games that are doing this with the Wii U to the Switch. 
Just kind of like what happened with the Wii going to the Wii U. Yes, they were sequels of sorts, but it was still the same feeling, the same gameplay experience of the original game that I got with a few minor differences. So when you hear about the same exact game coming out to a system that the game came out three, four years ago and is now being remastered, I'm looking at you Elder Scrolls V Skyrim coming to the Nintendo Switch. Yes, I'm excited about it. Yes, I think it's going to be a great game. And I'm not going to buy it at launch because I already own it on the other systems. There is literally no reason to pay full retail price for a game that's been out for years. I don't understand these executives at the game companies that make these decisions saying, Alright guys, I know we already got a game made. Let's port it to another system. Even though it came out two, three years ago, let's remaster it. Let's add features to it and let's slap a retail price of $59.99 on it. Very few people are going to buy it at full price. Now, I don't know what Skyrim's gonna retail at. I sure as hell hope it's not 60 bucks. But whatever it retails at, I promise you, it's gonna be more than what it's worth because you can get it cheaper on other systems. Yeah, you might say, Jeff, I wanna play Skyrim when I'm out. Okay, I guess it might play that part of a value proposition for you that you can play it while you're out on the streets walking around or in the airport or flying on a plane. Great, but for the rest of us, we can wait until it comes down to a normal price to get that experience on the go. Because I've seen Skyrim for less than 10 bucks, selling new, not used, for under $10 on the other systems. So I find it really hard to believe that people are gonna justify the purchase price of full MSRP for a new game that's already available. And while I don't feel like this is single-handedly going to kill the Switch, because the Switch is awesome, let me just be honest right there. Sidebar, I love my Switch, I love its portability, I love all the games that I got for it, it's awesome. It's not gonna derail the Switch, but if this keeps happening, I have some major concerns as far as third-party support and if they're really gonna be giving it their all, because if you're gonna be porting a three-year-old game to a brand new system, and it doesn't have good sales, you can't go back to the drawing board and say, well, we're not gonna make new games for the Switch because the games we put on it aren't selling. That makes no sense. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys today. Let me know in the comments section what you think about this situation and how you feel about these old games getting ported to new systems. Do you buy them? Do you feel like it's okay? I don't know. I'd love to hear your opinion about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good one.